Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I wanted to go ahead and talk about a challenge that I'm issuing to myself and to all of you if you would like to join. If you recently watched the video that I posted about my bookish goals for 2023, I mentioned that next year I'm primarily going to be focusing only on backlist titles. So by the time 2023 rolls around, 2022 and prior is going to be considered backlist for me. And I wanted to go ahead and make a quick video talking about this challenge, not only to provide myself with some more accountability, but to invite all of you to join if you would like to. Now before I get into how it's going to work for me and what I hope to do in 2023, allow me to unnecessarily and long-windedly provide some context as to why I'm doing this challenge. So for the past several years, I have felt in some ways like I've been playing catch up. And the reason I say that is because when I was younger, I was a voracious reader. I would read a lot of books every single year. And then when I got really serious about my higher education and went for my undergraduate degree, I pretty much stopped reading for pleasure altogether. That's just because my mind couldn't really handle it. My mind couldn't be reading textbooks all day and then read for pleasure at night. This was also before I discovered that audiobooks were my preferred medium for consuming books for pleasure. So when I was pursuing my undergraduate degree, the idea of sitting down and reading a book for pleasure physically was just non-existent. That was not going to be happening. And then when I finally graduated in 2017, yes, it took me a lot longer to get my undergraduate degree than it might normally for other people because I was always working full time. I was never fully focused on my education. I was only ever taking two, maybe three classes at a time, depending on what was going on. So it was a very slow process. And when I finally finished my undergraduate degree in 2017, that is also when I discovered the online bookish community. And so there was an explosion of bookish content in my life and I wanted to read all of the books. And so I started consuming all of the booktube videos. I started going onto Book Outlet, which I'd never heard of before and adding all of the books to my cart. And I just started accumulating book after book after book. As long as it sounded even remotely interesting to me, I wanted to go ahead and have it on my TBR. I would say that that was how I progressed for about two to three years. So by 2020, I had a pretty full TBR, but I was realizing that a lot of the books that I had added over the past two to three years were not really books that interested me anymore. Over those two to three years, I had really honed and curated my tastes as a reader. I discovered what I liked and what I didn't like in books. I discovered my preferred genres, what I liked to read, what I didn't, the tropes that I liked, the tropes that I didn't. I was just really coming to be more confident in my reading tastes and knowing what I was going to enjoy versus what I wasn't going to enjoy. And so in 2020, I started taking some serious steps to lowering the amount of books on my physical TBR. I made pretty strict rules for myself in terms of what books I was allowed to bring into my home versus what I was not allowed to bring into my home. And for the past two years, I was very successful at those goals. And I got my physical TBR down to an anemic level. I had about 30 books on my physical TBR before a recent haul that I did that bulked it back up. But the only reason why I allowed myself that haul was because my physical TBR had gotten so low and because I knew that what I was bringing in were books I was so extremely excited to read. So they were all carefully thought about before I made the purchase, which was another goal of mine was I wanted to become really mindful about the books that I brought into my home. And then I started to think about how now that my physical TBR has been dwindling down and it is a lot more curated, I started to think about all of the books that are on my radar that I do really want to read that I don't physically own. There are approximately 300 books on my virtual TBR at this point, which I know is a fairly small number for a lot of you. A lot of you are thinking only 300 books. What's the big deal about that. But what I'm concerned about is that these 300 books, which are primarily backlist titles, so titles published in 2022 or beyond, because we're thinking about 2023 now, so I'm considering 2022 and prior all to be backlist. Since the vast majority of the books on my physical and my virtual TBR are backlist titles, I know that if I don't focus on them and I don't prioritize them, that list is just going to continue to stagnate or grow with backlist titles, especially if I decide to focus purely more on new releases in 2023. And I don't want that to happen. I'm still never going to read new releases as they come out or anything like that. I just don't anticipate that being the case. But what I don't want is to have these books sit on my TBR for years and years and years, go unread, and then me lose interest in them. Like what was happening after I had hoarded all of these books and I was still curating my reading taste and then unhauled books in droves because they really weren't my thing. And so all of that to say, all of that comes back around to the fact that in 2023, I want to make an effort to read an abundance of the 
backlist titles that I have on my TBR. Now, am I going to read all 300 of those titles? No, because I only ever read about 100 books in the year. So it's highly unrealistic for me to do that. If I could read 300 books in a year, sure. Yeah, I would like to wipe that out entirely, but I just can't do it. What I'm going to do in 2023 is with very few exceptions, I'm only going to be reading books that were published in 2022 or prior. The only caveats that I'm allowing myself to this are one, if it is a book club selection. So I'm a member of a couple of book clubs and if they make a selection for a month that is a 2023 release, I will allow myself to read that book as long as I can get them from my library or Scribd or Audible in time for the book club pick, I will be reading those if they are 2023 releases. The second and probably the main and most important caveat are books that are sent to me either as part of a bookish subscription service or as part of the Facebook gifting group that I'm a part of. So at this particular moment in time, I have two bookish subscription services. I have book of the month and I have authentic books box. Now, of course, both of those boxes allow me to choose the books that I'm receiving. So those books will never be a surprise to me. So I'm hoping that anytime I am not skipping a month with those services, I am genuinely excited to read what is coming to me. This is another situation where I don't want those new releases sitting on my shelves, becoming backlist titles, and then over time, me deciding that they are no longer of interest to me. So I do want to read those as they are coming into me to avoid that happening in the future, to avoid an abundance of backlist titles sitting on my shelves that I may or may not want to read in the future. I have mentioned this a few times, but I am also part of a monthly Facebook gifting group where every single month there is a thread and we post our wish lists and then we have to gift the person who posted before us and then the person who posted after us gifts us. And there is like a $12 minimum spending limit and you can basically purchase as much as you want for the person that you're gifting. And so every single month I get a nice little surprise for my wish list. And a lot of the time those are backlist titles because like I said, the vast majority of my wish list and my virtual TBR and the books I don't own are backlist titles. But there are new releases and pre-orders that I do have on my bookish wish list. So there is still every possibility that I will receive a 2023 release as a Facebook gift from that group. And so again, if those come to me, I will want to read them as they come in. Just in general, any books that are sent to me, I want to read them as they come in so that they are not sitting on my shelves. But really, those are the only two caveats that I have. Everything else that I pick to read in 2023 has to be a backlist title. I just checked my Goodreads want to read list and the backlist titles that I have are 268. I do currently have 25 2023 releases that I want to read as well. So we're not going to count those. We're just counting 268 backlist titles. And my goal is to wipe about a hundred of those away. Now that doesn't necessarily mean I've read all 100 of these books. That just means that 100 of the books are no longer on this list. So if I read them successfully, if I attempted them and DNF'd them, or if I just decided that I was no longer interested without even attempting them, all of those will be considered getting them off my list. So I don't have to successfully read 100 of these. I just have to clear 100 off my list in some capacity. So 100 is pretty ambitious but I think that I can do it. The only other thing that I haven't really figured out how I want to monitor or keep track of is if there are other backlist titles that I come across that maybe should have already been added to this list and I thought they were but they aren't or if I discover new backlist titles that I'm interested in that I want to add to this list. I may consider the books that I have on this list to be locked down and any other books that I stumble across in the future that are backlist that I may want to read might be added to the read in 2023 in the future. I have done a really great job of being mindful about the books that I'm interested in and only adding books to my TBR that I'm truly excited about reading. Maybe they're by authors that I've read before. Maybe they are the next book in series that I'm really interested in continuing. Maybe they are authors that I think that I'm going to love and want to give a chance to, or maybe they are books or authors that I've heard amazing things about and that by the synopsis, they sound like they're going to be up my alley. Those are all reasons why books might be on this to read list. So these are all books that I'm genuinely at this point in my life, ex super excited to read. And I want to maintain that excitement. I want to maintain that freshness. And that is a whole reason why I'm doing this challenge. So if I come across backlist titles that I am this level of excited about, and I do really think that I want to read them in the future, I will either add them onto this backlist or keep track of them to add them for the future. I'm not sure I haven't really decided, but I'll cross that bridge when and if I get to it in 2023. But for now, that is really it. This is just a super simple challenge that I am setting for myself in 2023 to meet a goal of lowering the amount of backlist books that I 
I have on my TBR. And I wanted to go ahead and invite all of you to participate if you think that this is something that you might want to work on yourself. Maybe you can make your own rendition of this challenge for 2023. And if you do, I would really love to know what you decide to pursue for 2023. What rules you have set for yourself? What caveats there may be? Are you going to be strict? Are you going to be flexible? How are you going to do this? How are you going to battle your backlist? But that's really all that I have for this video today, guys. As always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.